This morning, we're looking at two new studies of autism. One of them out this morning suggests that kids can outgrow the disorder or they get better because they were misdiagnosed. The other finds that changing autism standards could leave out thousands of patients. Dr. Catherine Lord is one of the experts working on these new autism guidelines, and she joins us now. Thank you, doctor. Uh, we were talking uh, during the break, and I was wondering if parents could be encouraged on one hand, but also angry on the other. Encouraged because you're thinking, phew, my child doesn't have autism. But angry on the other hand, if you're thinking, I know my child needs, needs help, but now they're saying, no, he's not that bad. He or she is not that bad. Can you, is it a good news, bad news kind of thing? I, I think it is. I mean, I think the combination of both this new study that's coming out in pediatrics, which suggests that there are people who get diagnoses of autism, and then when you ask their parents later, do they have it, the parents say no. So it is possible either that the diagnosis was wrong in the first place or that kids grow out of it. And not everyone who gets a diagnosis of autism necessarily continues to have it forever. On the other hand, I think there's been huge concern in response to the recent media um, about the redefining criteria right. and families being very, very concerned that their kids are going to lose their diagnoses. And I think it's really important to reassure people that there is no intention that that will happen. So even if, even if that changes, then you're saying there's, there's no intention. But if they do, in fact, uh, they're no, they no longer fall under the spectrum. The concern is that they will lose the benefits that many parents need for these children. Is that expected to change if they're already diagnosed? No, it's not. I mean, I think that the intention of the new criteria is to better describe children who have, and adults, mm -hmm. who have autism, Asperger syndrome, PDD and OS, or anything with, that falls within that criteria. What we want to do is we don't want criteria that diagnose everyone as having autism. So we want to do a better job of diagnosing the people who do, but we're not trying to exclude anyone. Here's the question. What's so hard about diagnosing autism that you have these new studies uh, raising these questions? Well, I think the problem is that although autism is a neurobiological disorder, it caused to do with brain function, the diagnosis is made purely on the basis of behavior. And it encompasses a huge range of skills. And as the pediatric study showed, also associated problems such as mental retardation mm. or language delay. So we have to come up with descriptions for behavior that describe children and adults across development, mm -hmm. and describe people who ha may have no speech at all, up to very articulate, very bright people who also have the basic social deficits and other kinds of problems the, associated with there, autism. Is there a huge difference or divide within the scientific community about autism? I don't think so. I think that what we're trying to do is get better, faster, and more accurate in diagnoses, and the question is how to do that. Can you go back a little bit? Can you go back to the the statement you made about being able to outgrow autism? Because I got a very angry angry email from a friend of mine who has a child who has autism, saying that's just absolutely not true. How can you even put that on the air? So can you explain that a little bit more? What, well, I think it is two saying? different things. I think in the pediatric study, families were asked, "Has any health professional ever given you a?" said that your child might have autism, mm -hmm. and then asked, does your child have autism? Mm -hmm. So it's quite possible that in that study, someone said, maybe your child has autism, go see a specialist, and the parents did, and they didn't have autism. Mm -hmm. But there is but a let's small... talk about the kids that do right. have autism. Right. Let's they, focus on that. Yeah. Can they outgrow it? There, there is a small proportion of kids with autism who do outgrow it. What percentage? I would say 10 to 20 percent of kids with autism without other severe yeah. problems. Does that mean they were misdiagnosed or something No, happened? I think they really get better. I mean, it yeah. is possible for kids to get better. And is but, that about the treatment? I mean, and, and, and in revising then the criteria for autism, does this re revise then the treatment? Well, I think that the, the revising criteria should not affect the treatment okay. because the treatments have to be based on the characteristics of the individual child. So what does a parent do? I think that a parent needs to, first of all, get a careful diagnosis. They need more than a brief office visit of someone saying your child looks autistic. And then I think you have to figure out what treatment makes sense for your child. Great to have you here today, Dr. Catherine Lord. Thanks for your time.